deformed. Well, let's do a small problem. A 100 kilogram mass is suspended using a cable with a diameter of 2 cm. What is the stress in the cable? I showed this to you earlier. The stress is actually caused by the weight of the object hanging from it. And what is the area on which that weight is acting? It is the cross-sectional area of the cable. And the cross-sectional area of a cable like this is a circle. All right. So here is the cable and here is the 100 kilogram mass hanging from it. What is the force pulling the wire? It is the mass of this multiplied by G. 100 kilogram times 9.8 meter per second squared. That will be 980 Newton. So this cable is now being pulled by force of 980 Newton. And this force is distributed on what area? It is distributed over the cross-sectional area of the wire. The radius of the wire, we are given the diameter. If the diameter is one centimeter, the radius will be, uh, if the diameter is two centimeter, the radius will be one centimeter, that is 0 0.01 meter. What is the area of cross-section? The cross-section is, is a circle of radius 0 0.01 meter. Therefore, the area of cross-section is pi r squared. That is pi times uh, 0 0.01 squared. And we can write it as 3.14 times 10 to the negative 4 meter squared. So a force of 900 Newton is acting on an area of 3.14 times 10 to the negative 4 meter squared. What is stress? Stress is force per unit area. And that will be the amount of force divided by the area on which that force is acting. Therefore, the stress is 3.12 times 10 to the power of 6 Newton per meter squared. Okay, let's do another problem. A metal wire 1 millimeter in diameter and 2 meter long hangs vertically with a 6 kilogram mass suspended from it. If the wire stretches 1.4 millimeter under tension, what is the value of Young's modulus for the metal? Well, to find the Young's modulus, first we need to calculate the stress, force divided by area. Then we have to calculate the strain. What is the definition of strain? The ratio of the change in length to original length. Delta L, this is delta L, 1.4 millimeter. And we know the original length, so we can calculate the strain from these values. And stress we can calculate the same way we did it in the previous problem. The radius of the wire, we need to calculate from here. What is the diameter? The diameter is 1 millimeter. The radius is 0.5 millimeter. Convert that to meters. It is 5 times 10 to the negative 4 meter. Therefore, the area of cross section on which the force is acting is pi r squared. Pi times 5 times 10 to the negative 4 squared. And that is 7.9 times 10 to the negative 7 square meter. And what is the force? The force acting on that, on that wire is the weight of this 6 kilogram, which is 6 kilogram times 9.8 meter per second squared. That is 58.8 Newton. Therefore, what is stress? Stress is force divided by the area. 
a force of 58.8 Newton is acting on an area 7.9 times 10 to the negative 7 meter squared. So divide the force by that area because stress is 7.4 times 10 to the 7 Newton per square meter. All right, we now got the stress. We now need to obtain the strain. The original length is 2 meter. The increase in length is 1.4 millimeter. Convert that to meters. 1.4 times 10 to the negative 3 meter. Therefore, the strain is delta L divided by L. That is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 2. That is 7 times 10 to the negative 4. Well, we got the stress, we got the strain, therefore Young's modulus is stress divided by the strain, and that is 7.4 times 10 to the 7 Newton per meter squared, divided by 7 times 10 to the negative 4, and that is 1.1 times 10 to the 11 Newton per meter squared and that is the Young's modulus of this metal wire. Can you quickly look back on the table that I provided and tell me what metal is this wire which has this Young's modulus? Does it agree with the value for steel? I think this is steel. All right, let me know if you got uh, the value for the answer for that. What metal is this wire made of? Okay, another one, another problem. A rectangular steel column, 20 centimeter by 15 centimeter, supports a load of 12 metric tons. A metric ton is a thousand kilograms. If the column was 4 meter length before being stressed, what is the loaded length? Well, what we have is a column that is being compressed by, well, it's a tensile stress, but under the action of the tensile stress, the column decreases its length. That is the situation we have. Now, the Young's modulus for steel, well, the Young's modulus for steel is 2 times 10 to the 11 Newton per meter square. We will need that in this calculation. And this is the column which is before it gets deformed. Now, it's, uh, it's a 20 centimeter by 15 centimeter means if you go to the top of that column and measure the length and width, it is 20 centimeter by 15 centimeter, and you can calculate the area of the top of the column. The force, the deforming force is going to act on that area. All right. Therefore, the area is 20 centimeter, 0.2 meter, times 0.15 meter that is 0 0.03 meter squared and that is this area this area is 0 0.03 meter squared and on that area is now a load of 12 metric tons this is the load of 12 metric tons and that means the weight of this 12 metric tons is acting vertically on this column. What is that weight? The mass is 12 times 1000 kilograms. Multiply that by 9.8. You get 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 Newton. And that is the force that is acting on that column. The total force acting on the column is 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 Newton. And what is the area on which this force is acting? 
is 2 times 10 is the area is 0 0.03 square meter so this amount of force is acting on this much area what is the stress stress is force divided by area and this amount of force 1.2 times 10 to the 5 is acting on the area 0 0.03 meter squared therefore the stress is 4 times 10 to the 6 well in this problem we have now obtained the value of stress we know the Young's modulus and we know the original length of the column. The original length is 4 meter. What are you supposed to find? We need to find the loaded length. In other words, when the load is sitting on it, its length is decreased slightly. You need to find that loaded length. In order to find the loaded length, you need to find the change in length delta L. So that's what we're going to do now. We have the original length L equal to 4 meter. Therefore, the strain is delta L divided by L. And we are required, we need to find delta L in order to find its loaded length. So, strain, therefore, is delta L divided by 4. Stress is 4 times 10 to the 6. Strain is delta L divided by 4. The Young's modulus is 2 times 10 to the 11. What is the equation for Young's modulus? Y equal to stress divided by strain. That means Y is 2 times 10 to the 11. 2 times 10 to the 11 is 4 times 10 to the 6 Newton per meter squared divided by delta L divided by 4. Y equal to stress divided by strain. You can see the only unknown here is delta L, the change in length. Can you solve for delta L from here? First of all, this 4 is going to go to the top. Therefore, this delta L will be 4 times 4 times 10 to the 6 divided by this number. I hope you understand how this is done. So, delta L is this quantity multiplied by this 4 will go to the numerator and this quantity will be on the denominator. And that is 8 times 10 to the negative 5 meter. Well, this is the change in length. This is the original length 4 meter. Therefore, what is the loaded length? The loaded length is L minus delta L. So, loaded length is L minus delta L 4 minus 8 times 10 to the negative 5 and that is 3.99992 meter you can see the change in length is so very small in many cases it is very undetectable and that is very important if you want to construct the columns of a bridge and those are supposed to withstand the great stresses it must be produced it must be constructed with materials that have large elastic modulus so that the loaded length will not be very different from the actual length what happens if the loaded length is uh, much different from the actual length well it means the change in length will be considerably large that means the weight of the bridge will create cracks on the columns which will eventually destroy the bridge well if you remember a bridge collapsing in one of the midwestern states you remember that one that was a construction fault in fact the, the